School therapist Shay Prophet says he grew up with a single mother and few opportunities. His no-nonsense cadence and ramrod straight posture hint at his military background. After two tours, he became a correctional officer. I did find myself seeing some of the inmates um, and seeing a reflection of myself, seeing the challenges that they faced, and if they would have had somebody or a resource, would they still be in this situation? He would give the incarcerated men advice, try to help with their transition out. I used to get feedback from my, uh, my supervisors, like, that's not what you're here for. If you want to do this, you need to go back to school and become a counselor. So he did. But then he had what he calls an epiphany. So if I was going to be a correctional counselor, you had to go to a facility in order to see me. You had to have already gotten in trouble or done some sort of crime, and then I can give you a service. So during school, I decided to go into preventative maintenance. He went back to where the school-to-prison pipeline starts, with children like himself who need resources and aren't getting them. Now a program director for SBCS, formerly South Bay Community Services, he oversees an enormous task to screen San Isidro School District students, second through eighth grade, and provide them with the right behavioral and emotional health services. He asks them questions like, Do you like school? Are you turning your homework in on time? Are you able to get along well with others? His team places students who need a little extra support into groups to learn things like conflict resolution and emotional regulation. They sometimes connect high-risk students with therapists. Prophet says the screening, now in its first full year, addresses a key problem. A lot of students who need help don't seek it. Beforehand, all my referrals would come from either the teachers or the parents, but it kind of eliminates the voice of the student themselves. Screening lets them bring the services to the students. They also work with caregivers. If we're putting a Band-Aid on it, we're working with them at, at school, and then they go home and it gets washed off because they don't have the appropriate services or they don't have the resources available to them, then a lot of our work is just going in circles. So we try to reach out to the families and see what resources they might need. What do students themselves think? I think I look at mental health and the current mental health crisis that the youth are at, not as so much a cause, but rather as a symptom of many other ways we're neglecting and failing our students. That's Matthew Kitoriano high school junior and San Diego Unified student board member. Bell schedule and also the pressure of increasingly low acceptance rates within colleges creates a culture that really is focused on academic academics and not all the wonderful things that you know you can learn in high school like how to make friends. Kitoriano says some of the mental health work in schools is being led by students. With UCSD, they're designing a new curriculum. Using the classroom as a space to say, hey, the same way we talk about, um, here's what to do if you have, um, here's what to do if you get scraped on the playground. Here's what to do if you um, hit your head. Like, the same way that we treat physical injuries, we also want to think about how do we care for our mental health in that same way. State funding has allowed three schools to create wellness centers. Where students can maybe take 10, 15 minutes out of their day um, and just sit in a calming space. They're wonderful and they have great snacks. But he says it's hard to staff centers at all schools because of limited resources. Having an inclusive space is great, but without someone in there to look after to make sure that people are really being supported in that space, um, these wellness centers really can't be reaching their full potential. Despite more mental health initiatives in schools, some students fall through the cracks. Tomorrow, we'll look at a group facing some of the highest needs and biggest barriers, LGBTQ plus students. Katie Heisen, KPBS News.